Paranormal Anomalies, Episode 5, The Palmer House. This evening, we have a few other investigators with us. We have Anton over here. Hello. My name's Dimitri. Hello. And Dimitri is going to be joining our team in Season 2 for some of the future investigations. And you know Anton. He's been here and there, I think, at least one episode. He investigates with us every chance he gets. So tonight, we are going to be doing the Palmer House Hotel, located in Sox Center, Minnesota. A lot of people know the history. A lot of people know that they've had multiple fires over the years that have made the entire building have to be reconstructed at times. People know that there's a lot of different hauntings and a lot of different things in a lot of different rooms. So we got lucky enough to get into room 4, 13, 17, 22. We had access to, you know, the stairwells. We had access to the lobby area. But unfortunately, we did not have access to the basement. We did not get access to the bar because of the after hours. And we only got to spend a few minutes inside of the cafe, which we didn't really have anything happen in the cafe anyways. No. So, you know, it's not like it was a big loss, but we maintained. We got through it. We did what we needed to do. We hope you enjoy this episode. So the Palmer House Hotel dates back to the 1800s. The original home built on this chunk of land actually ended up burning down. And then they rebuilt and they built a little saloon style hotel that only had a few beds on it. And throughout the years, there were so many fires at this hotel that they had to do reconstruction, especially on the lower level, multiple times. Now, the Palmer House Hotel and Cafe has had a lot of different history, a lot of different stories told behind it. All the way back to the women taking their own lives to just um, simple stuff like people ended up having blankets pulled off them late at night. Oh, paranormal anomalies here, Anton, Jimmy, and Mike. We just got to the Palmer House. We're all set up. The equipment's all ready. We've got the entire corner of this third floor, and we've got room 17 and 22. That's right. Lucy's room. We are going to dig in this night. We are going to find some real good evidence, and we're going to bring it to you. Yeah. Yeah. That whatever that was, that was such a good night. <laughs> and where would I? Where would I be? You're everywhere. You're like everywhere. Yeah. yeah. No, you, you can definitely be in the shot. You signed the papers. You're good. At this point in the investigation, we're setting up all of our equipment. As you can see, Anton, what did you take on over there? Wasn't it a laptop and the... Yeah, I took over the, uh, I think it was the Chromebook 
and the webcam to go sit in the bathroom and set it That's right, that's right. So when we were setting up all of our cameras at the location, there was a lot to cover. I mean, we have a lot of cameras as you guys have seen. We, we bring a lot of stuff to the investigations, but there was a lot of stuff. So Jimmy was over setting up, uh, I believe the surveillance cameras. He was running out the wires over in the room 17, wasn't it, Jimmy? 17, 22, I think we did down the hallway as well, if I yep. remember, yep. yep. So we got all that taken care of, then we got the portable ready to rock and roll. And then I think we had the two seven watching us, or watching Mike, put up together the, the wired SLS and the Dell computer for the wired SLS, the surveillance. Yep, and as I was going there, I was moving about quite a bit in this entryway into room 22. That's where we kind of set up base camp, right there. We had everything set up and it was kind of, it worked out good throughout the, most of the investigation. It worked out actually pretty well because we had the TV set up for the surveillance. We had everything ready to rock. And at this point, you see Jimmy now, he's coming across from room 17, and as he walks across, he tucks his arm back not to hit the door, and the door slams. And as you see the confusion on both our faces, and we're just like, did that really just happen? It's like, yeah, that really just happened. It's just like, oh my God. And I got excited. Like, as you can see the look on my face, I got really happy. And then was... you see in this part where I noticed that it was on camera, I was just like, hell yes, we got that. Yep, so at this point, we were excited. We got it all captured. We kind of So after that anomaly happened, we decided it was time to get into room 22 and start this investigation after that happened. And we were kind of spanning through with the portable SLS. We had the night vision camera, surveillance camera in there. We were using the Canon, the Sony. We were throwing the entire kitchen sink at this. And then out of nowhere, we got this hit on the portable SLS. So as you see, this entity has formed about a foot ahead of this wall. And that is very interesting because there's nothing around it to make this image, which is very interesting because it's not hitting. There's, you know, there's no lamps. There's no anything. Nothing it starts to move. Yeah. I mean, it's weird, this one. It is. It's because there's nothing to map other than... Well, as you see. And, and, and we were even kind of scanning the portable back and forth and it still kept hitting on this thing. And then this second one comes out of nowhere. And this one, as you can see, is off the back wall. It, we, we didn't know. We didn't know, but it is super interesting because I mean, look at that. Where? What? Th exactly. So tell us what you think we want to know. So during this part of the investigation, it was just really heating up and we didn't really know what was going on. So we decided, you know what, let's kind of get an EVP session going. Let's see if we couldn't communicate with this entity in the room. And this is the EVP session. Actually, you know what, Jimmy? Mm -hmm. I want to turn the AC off for a few minutes just so we can have a good quiet EVP session. I just realized that. So, as you heard in this last EVP, it sounds like a woman saying, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I was shocked because I just asked, you know, communicate with us, and it just kind of came out. And I remember for a moment, Anton, didn't you notice like a knocking or something going on at that point? Yeah, there was a, it sounded like there was a knocking behind me on the wall. Yeah, and, and we all kind of heard that knocking. I mean, it wasn't just Anton, like we all kind of heard it, and it was just like, hmm. What was that? Yeah, we were we were like, wow, that's actually pretty interesting. Because we don't get that too often, so this was actually a nice refresher. Yeah. Yeah. This investigation went on for a little while longer, but it kind of fizzled out in there. So we decided, let's move on over to room 17 and see what was going on over there. So we decided to bring up all the equipment into this room. 
And as we got over there, like you heard Anton say earlier, this room had this weird feeling about it, didn't it? Yeah, it just, it felt like there was something with us, but it wasn't like as strong or like... Showing like, itself as much. Yeah. And when you start to get feelings like that, it makes you wonder, is this going to be malicious? Is this going to be have some harmful intent? So we kind of started questioning what was going on there at the Palmer because we had a door slam. In room 22, we also had that EVP and the portable SLS capture, which was both quite interesting. So when we got over here, we did have some expectations. We were thinking, man, this, this room should be even more intense because of all the history behind it. So once Anton, Jimmy and I got in there, we kind of got it going and nothing was really happening here in the bedroom part of room 17. So we decided to kind of move ourselves over into the sauna area. We started to come back over here and we find one of our portable batteries is completely drained. Our 2.7K camera completely got shut down. And yeah, we don't know exactly what's going on. Hopefully one of these other cameras picked up something. And we're gonna do uh, another EVP session right here in this room. Right back. Oh, I don't want to be I don't know, if that was it, it very well could have been. You know what I mean? Right. I just, I don't know, I guess we'll find out when we revisit the, the cameras. Yeah. So in that moment, we thought we heard something, and we caught this EVP that we are going to play back to you a couple times. The debate for us was two different phrases that we heard out of that EVP. We want to know what you think. Comment down on the video below, hit the subscribe button, send us anything you want. If you have a question, if you have a video or a piece of picture that you want us to look at and do some evidence review on, send it. Then, on the portable SLS, we had this hit. While Anton was sitting down in the chair, this portable SLS pops up on the wall over to the left next to him. There's a bare wall, there's nothing there for it to hit on. We were kind of shocked, surprised. So after this portable SLS, it really slowed down in room 17. We decided, let's go take a look around. We had a bunch of other places to look at. So nothing really happened at this point in the investigation. I decided to go downstairs and Jimmy comes with, we were gonna go check on the other cameras, make sure everything was still rolling and everything was going good. As we were coming down the stairwell, as you notice in the mirror, it looks like there's a second part of me shifts that follows. We're gonna play it back a few times for you. So as you see here, the guys make their way down into the lobby. They check on their equipment and decide to do a DVP session down there. Regrettably, they didn't get anything, so they went to another location. So the guys decided to move over to room 4. They felt this presence while they were in there. No audio responses were captured, but they did see this interesting orb journey. If you look at the curtains in the middle of the screen, you will see at the very top an orb come out and make a 90 degree turn oh, no. As you've seen there, that orb comes out and it just shoots straight up. 
does that 90 degree turn. It is pretty interesting and with us and orbs we try not to show too many of them but the ones that are dominant where they do these weird turns they're always kind of interesting to us. So after room four the guys decided to make their way to the children's playroom. They did not capture any evidence in it. So as our evening was wrapped up, we decided to collect all of our equipment, get everything put away, and make our way back home. Exhausted being 4 o'clock in the morning, we decided it's time. Paranormal Anomalies here. We're wrapping up at the Palmer House. We don't know exactly. Tonight was a little bit of an on and off evening. We captured some stuff, but we didn't really see anything really that wow factor this evening. We're hoping that we caught something on the cameras, something in the surveillance, something in one of them. We have a lot of footage to go through from our static night vision cameras that we weren't watching all night since we were doing other investigation work. So that being said, hopefully we catch something that we didn't see. Or hopefully we caught something. I got nothing in this place. And with that said folks, paranormal anomalies, we're leaving the Palmer House. Jim Palmer House Hotel. When we left there, as you can see in our closing, we didn't have very good expectations of this place. It, it, we actually didn't like this place very much. No, we, we really didn't. And as you see in my last comment where I said, I, I got nothing on this place. That is how I felt at that time. But after the evidence review, it, 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 it gave us quite a bit. But at the same time, I don't know. What do you guys think of the Palmer House Hotel? We, we want to ask you guys what you think about it. We weren't very impressed of the condition of the location. No, it, it had hardcore, it had hardcore mold. It was very unfriendly as soon as we got there. I mean, yeah. it was, it was like we were very unwelcome. I think they would actually sell what they're trying to sell, you know? It was kind of a little frustrating for us. That's why at the end of the evening, like I said, we had very little expectations of this location. The evidence we did get is pretty cool, pretty interesting. It um, is. I mean, it. we are at least happy with what we got. Yes, we are. And hopefully, you know, you've had better experiences than us there. That's why I said, let us know what you think. Let us know what your experiences were there, what you went through. You know, do you, do you feel that the environment could have been a little bit better? You know, you know what is exciting for us? Episode six. 
We heard stories online. Being Boyd is really new to the paranormal world. We didn't know if this was exactly, you know, going to give us any type of activity. If this was really haunted. Kind of one of those things. But the Boyd house, it sure delivered. Boyd did it. And let me tell you, we are super excited to bring this one to you guys. Yes, we are. So tune in next week.